In preparation for the Algebra 2 mid-chapter test, we're actually using the 2.1 and 2.2 quiz review from your book on page 66. And I'm going to post videos of the work um, on my YouTube page so you can look back at it later. We have a short class period today, so I want to make sure that we can have enough time to cover everything. On page 66 in your book, there is number 1, 2, and 3 just making a video. Numbers one, two, and three, you have to describe the transformation that's going on as compared to the parent function for quadratics. So I'm looking at these three graphs and I'll talk through what those transformations are and write up my solutions to this. In number one, um, first of all, I noticed that in number one, the graph has been translated up. The vertex is two units farther up the y-axis than the parent function translated up two units. I had to look back and double check to make sure that the uh, scale was going by ones. At first glance it looked like it was two units up, but I had to double check for sure it was. The other thing that happened was is the parent function got fatter. Um, depending on how you want to look at, depending on how you look at this, we could call that a vertical shrink because a vertical shrink goes towards the x-axis or if you looked at it in terms of horizontal it would be a horizontal stretch because that would be going away from so this is towards x-axis and a horizontal stretch is actually describing the same thing it's going away from the y-axis we're not asked to write the equation we're just asked to make a description of the transformation either of those would be acceptable um, problem number two. Um, in problem two, I noticed that the shape of the parabola has stayed exactly the same, so it's just a series of translations. It looks to me as this was translated down one unit and then to the left four units. Doesn't matter which way you write those, both of them are translations. You're going to wind up in the same spot no matter what. Uh, number three, again, I see the shape of the parabola stays the same for number three. No difference in the size, so we don't have to worry about stretches or shrinks. And uh, I do believe we can talk about this. Order wouldn't matter on this. It's a reflection over the x-axis. And then a translation or a slide to the right translation right and it looks like it's going one unit and it wouldn't matter we'd have the exact same result if we translated first and then reflected um when we look at numbers four through six hey guys i'm trying to make a video can you just step out if you're gonna chat and maybe shut my door you can be in here but you just need to be quieter sorry about that just trying to get this posted this morning and first hour students are coming in uh write a rule for g and identify the vertex um, in number four, we've got the, the function that we're going to start out with is f of x equals x squared. And we're given a series of transformations to perform. First of one is going to be a translation two units up. So as I go and prepare to kind of step through this, from here to here, I've got a translation up two. So that's a k value of two. So the first transformation is going to happen with x squared plus 2. Transformation up 2. From the translation up 2 with a k value of 2, um, we have to do a refresh reflection in the over the x-axis. So from here to here, I'm going to go and deal with my reflect over x. Now, if I'm going to reflect over the x-axis, this makes a negative. And one of the things I want to notice here is reflection over x-axis doesn't have anything to do with what's inside parentheses. It's just uh, hitting the a value. Right now, the a is 1. With that reflection over x, this is going to become negative x squared plus 2. It only affects the x squared as making the a value negative. And then the last part of this one wants a vertical stretch by a factor of 6. Now, a vertical stretch by a factor of 6 has to do with a being multiplied by the entire function. A vertical stretch of a factor of 6, vertical stretch 
a times the whole function, and in this case, my factor is six, so g of x is gonna be six times the entire function, negative x squared plus two, so that'll result in negative six x squared plus 12 g of x is negative 6x squared plus 12. They also want us to have the vertex on this. Um, the vertex, oh, that looks funny. No, plus 12. The vertex is going to be sitting at 0, comma 12. There's no value inside parentheses with x. I could assume it was plus 0. So the vertex is 0, comma 12. I'm going to finish this up in class fifth hour.